Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Let's Make a Game. So far we don't have too much of a game, however we have a few functionalities, especially placing down a bunch of conveyor belts. Now naturally they do not have a, a real function just yet, they wouldn't work. And to be honest, I would like to get myself some movement in the joint in today's episode. So our task today is going to be to spawn in a bunch of ores so that they can be transported as items on these conveyor belts. And holy cow, I had to think about this for quite a while until I came up with the solution I want to go for. At least until you guys come up with something better. Or maybe I will, who knows. Anyways, in the previous episode we did do a bunch of corrections, some optimizations. And there is one thing I haven't shown you just yet and that is the objects variables right here. I made this piece of code a lot easier. Before I was like with if and else statements, so if the global placement direction is that and that, then the self placement direction would be that. However, this can be done with a simple single line. I had like uh, 7 or 8 lines for that, it was crazy. But that is just a small change. Okay, so in order to get this episode started, you can already see I have a bunch of new things. First and foremost, I made an item corresponding with the actual object. So we're gonna have two different types of objects. One that is gonna be integrated into the world and another object that is gonna be represented as an item. For now, we're gonna make them the same size. We're gonna make them one entire square in size. Maybe eventually we're gonna have like uh, smaller items and we can have like two items on one belt side by side. But for now we're just gonna have one because the code is really complex for me to understand and I have to do this step by step. So that's what we have here. We have sprites for all of the items. They are basically the same, just a little less quality so that I can distinguish them. And I also have the same thing as an object right here. What is also new are these two scripts. We're gonna use these two. One is gonna be a temporary script. Uh, both of them are empty at the moment and we will assign them to specific events and of course complete the code in today's episode. Let's do a little more preparation. I'm gonna open up this object or call and in here we want to add, uh, let's see, probably a step event. Yeah, I'm gonna do a step event and we're gonna add a script, namely the or temp script. And this needs to go on all of our object ors. So the stuff that is actually spawning while the terrain is being generated. And last but not least with the iron step event, there you go. And you also get a nice or temp script. Great, that's all we need on them. What I basically want to do with this temp script is the ability to click on an ore spot and a newer item will actually spawn below it. You know, very simple, it's just temporary so that we don't have to have a harvester first. Next up we need to open up the actual item object, so the ore coal item that is gonna be produced by the harvesters in case they are on top of one of these ore spots. In the step event right here we want to have of course the belt movement script. So all objects that can be moved with belts, so naturally in item form, will have this script on them. So it's gonna be kind of a generic script that should be working for all objects. So that means we have to add that for all of them I guess. Belt movement for the copper item and also the iron item is gonna get a... no not begin step, a normal step event with the corresponding belt movement script. And I have the feeling we have to set up another variable. Yeah, I think it would actually be wise to do that in a create event of the item. So the item kind of needs to know is it at the moment moving or is it not moving, that is important. So I guess we can just set up a simple variable. I'm gonna call this self moving and it's gonna equal to false in the beginning. Yeah, self moving to fall. So we can basically copy that create event and add it right here. Does that work? Ah, no. Too bad, but this works. I can copy in the variable itself. So we still have to do that for the coal item. There we go. You get a create event with the self moving to false. Great, with that out of the way, I think we can get to the coding part. Let's set up the spawning functionality first within the or temp script. So that's or temp. There you go. 
What we want to define is a variable, I guess. Let's call it instance. So we want to check which instance it currently is. And we're going to do that with a switch statement. Namely, we want to check which object index this variable has. So remember, we're going to have this script on all of the ors. And first of all, we want to know which or type it is. So we can know which or we want to spawn. So in case the object index is object or call, then we want an instance to be created or no, we want to set the variable instance. And hold the phone, I used the wrong terminology here. There's a double point here. So instance should be object or call item this time. And after that, we want to have a simple break. Now, what did I do wrong here? I think we don't need that, yeah. Then the next case could be that the object is the or copper. In this case, we want to set the variable instance to object or copper item. There you go. Take another break and then case object or iron. We want to set the instance to object or iron item. So that is very simple. So we're just going to do a simple mouse cursor check and whether or not we're clicking. And if we're clicking, we want to spawn the corresponding type of or. So if the mouse X position is bigger than X and the mouse X position is smaller than X plus sprite width. And also if the mouse Y position is bigger than Y and the mouse Y position is smaller than Y plus sprite height. Yeah, in this case, we want to do something which is going to be a mouse check. So mouse check button released. And if it is the mouse button left, I would say, then we want an instance to be created. Simple as that. The instance is going to be uh, on the X plus sprite width uh, divided by two and Y plus sprite height plus sprite height divided by two and the object we want to spawn is of course the instance. Now this might confuse you a little bit and I forgot to mention that I actually decided it's going to be a lot easier for the code since we have the point of origin for the belts. Let's see if we open this up you can see this is in the dead center if you remember. So I decided to do that with the items as well so we have an easier job of dealing with the coordinates corresponding with the belts and the items. And of course this resulted in a little bit of a problem. Maybe I'm actually going to show you that just so you can understand a little bit better why I'm adding these corrections. So if we are just adding it on the X or Y position, of course it would appear at the exact location of the OR. However, I want to spawn it a little bit further down. So we're going to add a sprite height to that. And that of course means if I click the OR, then beneath it should be spawning the instance that we have in the variable. Let's actually test this out by running the game. And we are going to click this bad boy. And now you can see how it is kind of out of placement here. And this is why I had to add another X position or half an X sprite and half a Y sprite both in the plus direction. So let me quickly repeat that again, plus sprite width and height for the other thing. Of course, divided by two. It's just half a sprite width that I need. But there you go. That's all we needed to do to spawn the ores. Now we can spawn them indefinitely by just clicking on them. Of course, they will always appear beneath the source and I can spawn multiple of them, which is still a problem. But that's something we can tend to another time. However, if we place belts beneath these items, of course, they are not going to move. Everything has to be programmed in. Nothing is for free. That means we're gonna go to the actual core of this episode, which is the belt movement. This script is on the step event of every object or item that can be moved with belts. So proper naming here, belt movement. And we want to do, oh man, oh, this is so complicated. I had such a long time figuring this out. I know it's embarrassing, but you come up with so many solutions and there are so many ways to accomplish this. And this is just the best that I came up with so far. So first of all, we want to figure out the movement direction, right? We want to know in which direction is the freaking belt actually looking. And of course, we can only know that if we first check uh, whether or not there is a belt beneath the item. 
And if there is a belt beneath the item, we want to check the direction. And if we know the direction, then we want to move the item into that direction. One more thing I'm not sure I have shown you in one of the previous episodes. I added a global variable right here, the conveyor belt 01 speed. And I set this equal to 1. So it's going to move like 60 pixels per second at the moment. Because we have a room speed of 60. Anyway, so let's check it out. Now we're gonna call that moving variable. We first want to know, is the object already moving? And if you remember, we set that in the create event, we set it to false. So we want to check if the moving variable is false, but we also want to check at the same time if there is an instance of the conveyor belt. So at the X and Y position of our item that we want to move, is there a conveyor belt 01? And if that is the case, then we want to do a few things. First of all, we want to set a variable that is going to be called nearest belt. We want to figure out which belt exactly is beneath us. The nearest belt is going to be the instance nearest and it's going to be equal to x, y object conveyor belt. So we basically want to figure out which conveyor belt of all the conveyor belts in the room is currently the closest. And I, come on, there we go. Now that we have one single object addressed, this is not going to address all the conveyor belts. It's just going to address the nearest one. So we have a specific one that we can address. And now I'm going to use the with statements once again. So with the nearest belt, now everything within that with statement is as if we had the script on the belt itself. So now I can actually check the variable of the belt we set in one of the previous episode, namely the placement direction. So I'm going to set another variable, move direction. I want to use it in this script. Now this is kind of a problem and I'm going to show you why in just a second. However, the move direction is going to be set to self placement direction. Actually, I called it placement deer, if I remember correctly. We had a look at that at the object variables. Here you can see the self placement deer, which is on the create event of our belt. So we already know in which direction the belt is moving. However, I cannot utilize this variable outside of the with statement. It's like if I had defined this variable on the nearest belt itself. Therefore, I need to add another thing right there, which is other. So this now means so this is now addressing this script again, the original script and not the with statement. And this is very important. So here we could define the other variable. And this was my, oh my gosh, until I figured this out, oh, make things a lot easier if you know that. What we also want to change is the other moving to true. And of course, other moving is the same as self moving because it is uh, written within the with statement. We can now use a self move direction in order to figure out in which direction we have to move the item. And we also have a Boolean variable that can decide which part of the script to run. For instance, after we set the other moving to true, then this is not going to repeat itself. And that is a great thing, even though this is running 60 times per second, this script. This part is only going to run as long as the moving is false. Therefore, we can now take care of the movement. And of course, we have to start this with the self moving equals true. So in case it equals true, then we want to run this code. And in case it equals false, we want to run this code. Let's start this off with another switch statement. And here we want to check the move direction. OK, and of course, this part only runs once we have gone through this, because by default at the create event, we set the moving to false. So therefore, this script is not going to run by itself. Now, in case the move direction equals up, then we want to do something, which is we want to set the y coordinates to minus equal global dot conveyor belt speed 01 or conveyor belt 01 speed. That's what I called it because we are going up. And of course, that means we want to decrease the y coordinates, right? But we only want to do this to a certain point, which is exactly one uh, tile size, right? So we can say if the Y position of our current object that is moving is equal to the nearest belt's uh, Y position minus the sprite height, because that's what we are going for. We are moving the object one sprite height towards the top. We could also say minus uh, global dot tile size, right? Because we want to move it exactly one tile. 
So if we reached that point of moving exactly one tile, then we want to set the self moving to false again. And therefore we can check whether or not the next belt we are on is still moving in the same direction or into another direction. Great, now we have to do this with all directions. We're gonna say in case it is right, then we want the X position to be plus equal global dot conveyor belt 01 speed. And also if the X is equal to nearest uh, belt X position plus global dot tile size, then we want the self moving to be false again. Great, we could actually copy this over and just correct what's wrong here. So case it is down, then we want the Y plus global conveyor belt speed. That is actually good. And Y, Y plus global tile size. And last but not least, we are going to need the left direction, which is X minus global dot conveyor belt speed and X minus global dot tile size. There we go. I think think that was everything that we needed. Now why is this a little bit weird? This seems out of place here. Oh, I actually forgot all of the breaks. We... Oh, I actually forgot all of the breaks. Of course we need a break like at every finished case statement here. Break for you, break for you, and also for you. Okay, I think we should be ready to actually test the script and check it for errors. There might be a few errors actually. But I hope you understood what's going on. So let's set up a few conveyor belts into all kinds of directions. We want to move like so and so probably. Yeah, there we go. And then we can spawn one of these guys and it is actually moving. Yeah, I already knew that, but I'm still, man, I'm so proud that I managed to do this. I went with so many other solutions first until I figured out this other statement. So I could finally address the correct variables in my code. Very cool. And you can see it comes to a halt right here unless we place another belt, then it simply continues, which is great. It, it is amazing. I love it. We can even uh, lead it back on top of this belt and now it's going to do it indefinitely. There are obviously still a few problems. For instance, if we have another object in the way, it will actually overlap. That is still something we will have to figure out. Right now all of the objects stack and of course they should kind of clog up and get into each other's way and so on and so forth. But that is something for another time. I would say we're gonna wrap it up at this point. If you have any questions as usual feel free to ask. But other than that have a great time and hopefully I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Bye bye.